everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to go over the books that I have recently read from January through March. I'm hoping to do this four times a year, so every three months, a video like this will come out. If you wanna check out what I'm reading in real time, check out my Goodreads link down below, and you can see how I'm reading them and what I'm reading currently. So I read 13 books in this past three months. That's not bad, I'm not mad about it. This is a mixture of both physical copies as well as audiobooks. I am looking at this list and most of these books that I read were between February and March. So January, I didn't really read anything. So this is basically 13 books for the past two months, which I'm very happy about. Between the thunder outside and my boyfriend downstairs screaming at his PlayStation, there's a lot of noise going on. So just bear with me, folks. The first book I listened to this year was The Year of Less by Kate Flanders. I really like this book. I gave it a four star rating on Goodreads. I also took on The Year of Less this year and I'm currently working in not as an extreme standard that Kate did, but a little dialed back and I'm really enjoying it. I have seen my savings grow exponentially because of it. And I'm also seeing myself not get as attached to materialistic things. If that is something that you are interested in learning more about, I do have a video dedicated to that, that I will link up whatever slides up here. And that just goes in depth to more about my year of less. I also recommend that if this is something that interests you to pick up that audiobook. Her narration is beautiful and it really kind of helps you put things into perspective, especially in these crazy times we're in. The next book I read was Children of Virtue and Vengeance. This is by Tomi Adayemi and this is in the Children of Blood and Bone series. I really enjoyed this sequel. There is going to be a third book coming out. I'm not sure when, but I'm very excited about it. I really liked it. I actually think I liked the second book more than the first book, which a lot of people may disagree with me on, but I really, really enjoyed this sequel. This is about a land of magic that just gained its magic back. And now there is this struggle of power between people that have magic and people that don't have magic. So it's a really interesting read. There are some love stories in it, as well as great character development. And I'm really excited to see where the third book goes. I know I gave this a five star rating on Goodreads, and if this isn't a series you have picked up yet, I definitely, definitely recommend it. Before I go into the rest of these books, I do want to make a disclaimer that a lot of these books have been out for years, okay? I am just now diving into this booktube world. I never used to be a big reader. I was always a big audiobook person, but never really a big reader. And I have just fallen in love with it recently. So now I have the opportunity to read all these books that have been loved for so long and just experiencing them for the first time. So I wouldn't be shocked if most of these books you've heard of or read before. But for me, I am really excited that I've gotten to read them and it has sparked my love for reading once again. With that being said, the next book I read this year was Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. And Oh my gosh, I honestly think this is probably my favorite book at this point in my life. I read this within three days. I read it so fast. I love the relationship and friendships that were formed with both Simon and Baz, um, but also Penelope and just this magical world that Rainbow built in this book was phenomenal. This is kind of Rainbow Rowell's take on the Harry Potter books. And I read the Harry Potter series last year and absolutely loved them. So I knew that anything in that realm of magical goodness I was gonna love. So I picked up this one and this exceeded any expectation I had. This is also one of the first queer books I've ever read that had a strong queer presence in it and I absolutely love that too. The relationship between Simon and Baz just melted my heart to a whole nother degree and they are probably some of my favorite fictional characters now. I haven't even read Fangirl yet but now it is definitely on my list because of how much I enjoy 
enjoyed this book. Next, I listened to Cinder by Stephanie Meyer. This was an audiobook and this was the first book in the Lunar Chronicles. I gave this a four star rating on Goodreads. I think I could have brought it down to maybe a three and a half star. This was my first book in the trope of fairy tale retellings. And while I did enjoy it, I did find it to still be very, very predictable. I knew every big twist that was going to happen before it already happened. So I'm glad I listened to this rather than read it because I don't think I would have gotten through it had I read it physically just because it was very predictable for me. I still really enjoyed the story and I'm continuing on with the series. Following that, I read Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell and this is the sequel to the Carry On book that I read earlier. I gave this a three and a half star rating on Goodreads. I was, I don't wanna say I was disappointed by this, but I was disappointed. I had really high hopes going into this. After reading Carry On, I was ready. I purchased this the next day after finishing it and I was ready to dive into this world again. The only thing with this book that I really did not like was it just seemed so rushed. There was no development between scenes. There was the dialogue. I just felt lackluster. I still really enjoyed the relationships in it, but I just think there could have been so much more. For this being a 350 page book, while the first one being a 500 page book, I just felt like this was more of a segue to a third book rather than a nice solid sequel. I still really enjoyed it, but it's not something that I would pick up again and read. The next two books I read were actually part of a duology and I binged these two back to back and they are Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. I gave both of these books a five star rating on Goodreads and these are hands down in my favorites for sure. The best way I could describe Six of Crows, which is the first book in the duology, is kind of like a take on Ocean's 12. It's a bunch of misfitted people coming together to perform a heist. I preferred Six of Crows to to Crooked Kingdom, which a lot of people differ on that. They usually like Crooked Kingdom better, but I just love the meeting of the characters and their heads budding in Six of Crows. I just really, really enjoyed this first book so much. I really could not say enough good things about these books. I think the character development was so well-crafted. The world that Lee Bardugo built around these characters was perfect. And it just, you felt like one of the crows in these heist situations and it was a really immersive read. I read them so fast and I absolutely love them. These will definitely be part of my favorites and I definitely will probably reread these books coming in the future because they were so beautifully written. I would recommend these to anyone. Following those, I did listen to Strange the Dreamer by Lanny Taylor. Now this is the first book in the duology between this and Muse of Nightmares. While I've heard great things about this, I did not enjoy it as much as I was hoping to. And so I may get a little bit of pushback on that, but I only rated this three and a half stars on Goodreads. What I really appreciated about Strange the Dreamer was the world's that Lonnie built, they were just absolutely beautiful. I feel like I could draw them from memory because of how detailed she was. But in that same vein, because of how descriptive this writing and how detailed it was, while it did transport me to these worlds so easily and flawlessly, it did seem to make the chapters kind of drag a little bit and I was kind of getting bored. There were some chapters that went really quick and I was absolutely loving them, but there were others that I was just just hoping to get through because it was just very detailed and I was like, I get it, the sky's blue, okay? Like, we get it. But I think that's why a lot of people respect her writing is because of how immersive she can get. But for me personally, it just kind of made the story drag a little bit. Following that, I did read Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin. I did just post a review on this book last week. So if you are interested in that review, check out the link, I'll put it up here. I did edit my star rating on Goodreads to be three and a half stars. After I posted that video, I kind of realized that this was more of a three and a half star book, not a four star book. Nonetheless, I did enjoy this book and I will be picking up the sequel, but if you want any more specifics on it, go check out my review. After that, I listened to Scarlet by Stephanie Meyer, and now this is the sequel to Cinder, and this is in the Lunar Chronicles trilogy. I rated this a three star on Goodreads, and I liked it, but man, I don't know if it's just this whole book series I don't like, but I'm just 
finding it to be really underwhelming. I did like Scarlet as a character, um, and there were some great action scenes in there. But other than that, I was really looking for Cinder's story in that book, and Cinder was barely present and when she was I feel like it really wasn't progressing her story much it was more or less just progressing Scarlet's story so I'm really hoping in the third book Cress they kind of start bringing back the original story of Cinder and Kai because that is what I'm in here for and not for Scarlet so I liked it but I'm hoping it gets better in the third book I'm still going to continue on with the series just because it's a cult flavor and I'm pretty sure the next book Cress a lot of people really really enjoy so I'm hoping it's the same for me next I read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and holy crap you know how I said descriptive writing can kind of drag a story along how it did in Strange a Dreamer this is an example of ex descriptive writing that only enhanced the story and made you want to binge read the book. This was one of my first adult fiction books and I fell head over heels. From the first chapter of this book you can tell how talented Erin Morgenstern is as a writer. This transports you to another world entirely and you, it's just honestly a beautiful read. This is definitely a book on my list that I gave five stars and it is easily one of my favorites and one that I will keep on my shelf because I will want to reread this in the future just because of how beautiful the story was. I don't want to give too much away about this book because if you haven't read it already I think it is a book that you kind of want to go into it blind. The best way I could describe this book without giving anything away would be you reading a couple excerpts from the back here. The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway, a duel between two magicians. And honestly, I think that's all you need to know about this book before you go into it. Just know that this will completely transport you and it has taken a piece of my heart. It is such a good book. I would recommend this to anyone, just like how I would recommend the Six of Crows duology to anyone. Following that, I listened to One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a four star rating on Goodreads. Now that I think about it, I could have given it a three and a half star, but I think a four is fine. With this book, it is about a murder that happens and you follow the lives of four students after the murder and they are all treated as suspects. So it is really interesting from the first chapter, you're dealt with the murder and then from there on you're kind of going into the point of view of these four suspects trying to figure out what's happening and what secrets they've been hiding while they're being fleshed out to the public themselves. This was an interesting read and I did find some of the plot twists in it to be not so predictable so I did appreciate it in that respect. I am excited to pick up the second book but I do really recommend picking this up in the audiobook version because it does have a full cast and I think that really lends well to the book reading itself. And last but not least, a book that I finished within three days was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. So essentially, if you do not know what this book is about, it's kind of like a retelling on the classic Beauty and the Beast fairy tale. Now, where I think Cinder lacked when it came to the retelling aspects of a fairy tale this one completely blew it away even though you kind of have that understanding of what's to come in this book you're still you're still on the edge of your seat because there's so much more to this story than just that base storyline and that is what i really respected and what i didn't seem to find in the cinder book what I really appreciated was the character development in this book as well as the relationships that were built. It is one of those enemies to lovers trope, which if you know me, you know I eat up, okay? It didn't leave off with any huge cliffhangers, but you knew that the story was going to progress and maybe in a way that there could be a love triangle, which I'm down for. All right, so that is everything that I had read between January and March of this year. Have you read any good books? Please put them down in the comments below. If you wanna keep up on what I'm doing when I'm not here on YouTube, don't forget to check me out on Instagram. My handle is at Sarah and Cam, and the link will be down in the description box below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I put new videos out every Thursday and occasionally on Mondays. I hope everyone is staying safe out there and washing their hands and social distancing, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.